I think we did pretty well on that uh, second, uh, second hymn there for being a new one. Sounded good. Our second scripture reading this morning is from Romans uh, chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in our hope of sharing the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, which has been given to us. We are continuing um, in our series on looking at spiritual fruit. Um, and we're doing that through um, the story of Moses and the Exodus. Um, if you were here last week, you will know that we were um, looking at Moses' um, excuse, excuses and trying to back out of being sent by God after the burning bush experience. And you will notice this Sunday, we're all of a sudden in the wilderness, and we kind of skipped over the ten plagues and the parting of the Red Sea, and actually, you know, Moses actually going down and telling Pharaoh, let my people go. Um, and I just... Uh, raise that as a thank you for being with your patient with your pastor um, who puts together a blessing of the animals and a scripture where all of the animals die on the same Sunday last Sunday um, and has to change that because that doesn't come on guys it was funny <laughs> and, and sad and so we switched it up a little bit um, so there's a little bit of a jump but there's still parallels in what we're working with because we're looking last Sunday at the parallels between Moses having this incredible sacred ground moment with God where his shoes are off and God is speaking directly to him revealing God's name to him and calling him to go and he's all no, I don't speak really well. No, I, and finally with the, can you just send someone else? And God still holds that refusal and still works with Moses. Um, even when it says in scripture, God's anger was kindled against Moses. Like, come on, are you serious? We've just been through all of this. You've seen what I'm going to do. Um, but okay, um, I'm going to get you Aaron and we're still going to do this. And so today now with all of the Israelites, there have been plague upon plague upon plague and finally they are free. Only to see the Egyptian army coming after them. Only to see Moses part the Red Sea and have the chance to walk on dry ground to freedom and to watch their captors be enveloped in the sea after behind them. And so now they're in the wilderness, and they're hungry. And, and this is one of those moments of, I'm sorry for what I said when I was hangry. Um, but we've, we've got grumbling happen every, all the time. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, to the whole week long. Grumble, grumble, grumble. And so Moses is praying, and God's like, all right, I got this. There's going to be meat, and there's going to be manna. Um, but do you remember from scripture, from what John read, right, of what the Israelites said in their grumbling? Why did you bring us to this land to die? Why can't we be back in Egypt by the flesh pots where we had our fill of bread? Seriously? That's how you're going to remember slavery? You really are going to remember and rewrite history to remember your bellies being full and having your fill? while you were being abused and while you were being killed and while you were by not being cared for? Like, I, I mean, if you're God at this moment, right? Like, it was your cries that brought me to you. It was hearing your cries. It was seeing your pain, knowing your suffering and coming to deliver you. And now all of a sudden we're here and you're like, just kidding, it was way better. So if we can just pause in a moment for the patience of the God we serve. We serve a God who loves us so much 
that God is willing to do all of this, to give all of this for us, to hold this space, even when we're cranky at best and chucking it out the window at worst. This is the love of God that hears our cries and delivers us from injustice and then holds that love and that space and stays with us even when it's ourselves that God has to deliver us from from the way that we have internalized that justice, from the way that we un illogically, with no reason, covet that pain and being that trapped. Even when we could take one step beyond to freedom, but instead turn and entrap ourselves. This is the depth of love and of patience and of gentleness that we're talking about here. And this is what we are called to follow. This is the model that God sets for us of what right relationship looks like. And this is not easy. I mean, we all know patience is hard. We all know how we have cried over just wanting things to go away and be okay right now. We all know the battles that we have fought where we have cried out like so many psalmists and ancestors of our faith saying, enough is enough. When will you hear my cry? When will you answer my prayer? And then Paul speaks to us in a call to patience, in a call to endurance, in a call to being present and to letting our suffering be our suffering because we have the peace of Christ. Because if we can know who we are and whose we are, if we can center ourselves in that salvation and in that promise, then we have the capacity to suffer. We have the capacity for suffering to open us up and to create in us a strength that never was present before because we suffer in peace, knowing that God will give us the endurance that we need, that God will teach us and mold that suffering in such a way that it can bring character and that that character can bring hope. And we all know we live and survive because of hope. But because of God working in us, we can start to see hope sooner and more clearly than others around us who don't have the practice. So that when the storms of life come, because we just named the storms we are facing and joys and concerns, and there are more, whether that be the literal storms that are going on right now or the figurative ones, but they will always come. But we, how we handle them, how we survive them, depends on what room we give over to God to train us and to develop in us, to build us the, the early church image um, or the early metaphor for the church was a boat. So what kind of boat do you want in surviving these storms? Do you want one that has a hole in it and you have to completely bail out every second so any little thing that comes up you are literally sunk and done? Or do you want one of these freighters that's like, freaking bring it on. I got this. This is the walk of faith. And this is why patience is so absolutely critical. What can we hold with God, partnering with God, so that more can come up? This is the practice of what is enough. This is what it meant for the Israelites to be in the wilderness, to reprogram themselves so that they didn't instantly grab and try to hoard as much as they could for themselves, but they could trust and one, redefine what enough was for them, manna-wise, and then two, trust that it would be there and not grab someone else's away from them so that that person didn't have any. I mean, I love this passage, right? Because what better way to practice this than the manna that if you get extra, it's going to rot. So you're going to smell it. You're going to smell the harm that you brought to God relationally and to your community. It's going to be right there in front of you, assaulting every single sense. 
we don't have that anymore. It, it, we don't have something that, that's, that is that in our face of what happens when we hoard and we decide we need more than what is enough for us. And that's what we're practicing right now in Financial Peace University. That's what budgets are for and helping us remember what is enough so that then when all of those extra, oh, get this and you'll be happy, or oh, that just that buy, it's only a couple big you know, dollars, it's only one goldfish, it doesn't matter. Hello, compounding interest, yes, it does matter. Because what you take away now means you won't get 10,000 of that later on in the eighth miracle and wonder of this world. And if we can save appropriately and have the patience to see the long game, and it happens in church world, too. As United Methodists, we started in fields because the Episcopal churches wouldn't have us. We started our class meetings, our small groups um, in homes like we'll be getting to in this new year. We started all of that. And the, when we did finally purchase a building, did you know that every single pew was movable? They were put in place for Sunday services, and as soon as service was over, they were pushed to the side so that all of the women and children who were cold and who were suffering from the Industrial Revolution and the overcrowding of the day had someplace safe that they could come and be. Did you know that Sunday school wasn't to teach our stories of the Bible? It was to teach math and literacy and health for schools that weren't available for all the people who needed them. How do we use our resources? Are we thinking of them as things to support us? Are we thinking of them in terms of what are to be shared? To make someone else in our community be able to get to that point where they actually have enough of what they need to survive and to thrive. Part of what we'll be looking in this new year is a cluster youth ministry. And once again, our youth are leading the way and talking about what it means um, to be able to branch out and partner with other churches and, and to widen the vision so that we're not just looking at our friendships here, which are really important, right? We you got some good people to hang out with. But who are the others who need that too in our community? And so we'll come together with May's Chapel and the Texas Charge and look at what it means to take care of our needs while we are meeting the needs of others so that everyone has enough. This is what we are about. And it's hard. It takes a lot of patience, right? We don't know what's going to happen with the amped name. Like, there are things that make us nervous. Um, when... When we go to the grocery store, well, did I remember, is there really going to be enough in the freezer if I don't get this just to carry over and make sure that this is there? If I give a tithe, will I have enough later on? If I set this aside for savings, am I going to be able to take care of this prescription here? There are a lot of very legitimate questions that we have to wrestle with and go through. And a lot of what we're trying, there are going to be moments, guys, in the cluster youth ministry coming up where we're not going to get it right and it's not going to work. You've already had one of those moments with our arrangement with Sunday school and trying to figure out while we're getting the teachers that we need together. And those moments are going to come with the small group ministry, too. But that can't shut us down. We have to have patience through that so God can work and bring forth what God will call out and quite honestly we got to be proud of failing because it means we're actually trying because it means that we're trying to do something that's bigger than who we are relying on a God who is bigger than us and that in and of itself means that we are being the disciples that we are called to be and so may we do this journey together and may we do it with patience May we do it holding that we have a vision and there is something that God will bring forth from us, but it won't happen tomorrow and it might not happen in a year, but it doesn't mean we don't stop building our boats and building the thing that can not only hold us, but hold our community.
And I want to close with a gift um, that has been shared with me this past week that exemplifies this patience already happening in our community. Um, when I first got here just a little over a year ago, I shared my personal theology on understanding the Holy Spirit um, as female and wanting to include both the feminine and the masculine and referring to God and how we access God and how we understand God. There were four folks who had a lot of trouble with that, um, but they didn't vote with their feet and just immediately leave. They didn't come to me the very first Sunday that I was meeting you all and give me the what's up speech. They waited an entire year. They, were, they practiced the spiritual discipline of being uncomfortable and being comfortable in that discomfort and held that discomfort and held that space to build relational tissue so that we knew who each other were and had some context before then we had the conversation. And so this past week they came and were like, okay, Pastor Kate, we need to sit with you. We need to talk about this because we're not okay with this and we're really struggling. But because they were patient, because they held that space, we knew each other in a way that we could have a conversation that would, quite frankly, not have been possible a year ago. That is the gift that I'm talking about. That is the gift that God gave the Israelites and God gives us every day. And that is the gift that we are called to give one another. And I cannot tell you how grateful I am to be in a church where discipleship matters enough to you all to practice that gift and to give it to me too. So we're going to do this journey. We're going to practice the budgeting and we're going to cry and we're going to get it wrong and we're going to stick with it. That was a moment. <laughs> and we're going to stick with it. So take that devil. So it's coming. Get ready for it. All right. And we're going to do it and we're going to do it together. Um, because that is our call, and that is what will build the kingdom of God. Amen. Um, so for our commitment in the coming week in practicing patience, um, just take the long road. Keep the long goal in mind, whether that's putting more towards saving for compounding interest and not getting something that would have been fun, but it's just not worth having all of that uh, money that will come later after retirement, whether that's instead of texting to break a, up with someone, um, it's having a conversation with them and making yourself vulnerable and uncomfortable. Um, whether it's um, instead of grabbing a meal through the drive through take time to make it and gather around the table and share it. Whatever that patience is for you, whatever that long road is for you, just do it in one way this coming week. <laughs>